Hey, happy Friday. Say happy Friday. Oh, I love you too. Say happy Friday, huh? Wave to everybody. Good morning, she says. Good morning. Say this with me. The rest of my life, the rest of my life is the best of my life. And the best of my life is the rest of my life. Hey, today is Friday. Today is offering day. And don't forget, when you make your offering or your donation or you tithe today, which a lot of people do, please call me because I want to speak the word for word blessing over you that God told us to speak. Amen. The word for word blessing. And he said, when you do that word for word, then I will bless them. Amen. Just like she is blessed. Super blessed. Hello, super blessed people. How many, Mary, did you know that our people are super blessed? Amen. And the definition of super blessed is when you are increasing. When you begin to increase, that is super blessed. And believe me, we're taking everybody there. And on Monday, I'm going to give you the steps to get there. Amen. So make sure you tune in Monday. Mary, do you have a Merry Minute for us? I do. Well, come in and say hello. Hello. <laughs> uh. We can't all fit here. <laughs> all right. Well, I found this thing about mothers that I had written a little bit ago, and Sunday is Mother's Day, so I'm just going to read it to you. What about mothers? God loves mothers. If it wasn't for mothers, noses wouldn't get wiped, knees wouldn't get kissed, hugs wouldn't be there, all these would be missed. Mothers put feelings into children, compassion, understanding, love, gentleness, protection from the world. Mothers dress their kids. They make sure the shoe is on the right foot. The shirt is buttoned properly and pants are on straight. <clears throat> it's the little things that mothers do that make them so great. <clears throat> So Sunday we honor mothers, yours, theirs, everywhere. My mother has gone to be with Jesus. <clears throat> My mother too. If yours has to, honor someone else's mom or someone who doesn't have somebody to honor them or make them feel special. God loves moms. Exodus 28 says, honor thy mother and father that thy life may be long upon the earth. Amen. And Sunday, we are going to honor the mothers with a gift. We have a gift that uh, Anna is making and Mary is putting a little something in there too. But we're going to honor the mothers on Sunday, huh? Hey, since this is the rest of your life and the best of your life, I want to talk to you today about how to break the spirit of poverty. How many of you know, and it's all in this book, if you don't have this book, go to Amazon and get this book, How to Break Curses. It is selling very well on Amazon. A lot of people around the country have gotten this book already. Make sure you have it. Make sure you have that book, How to Break Curses, because I want you to live a curse-free, blessed life. And you can do that. Amen? But I want to talk to you today about how to break the spirit of poverty. Poverty is not about money. It doesn't, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example. In 1964, the president of the United States at that time was a guy named Lyndon Johnson. And he started what he called a war on poverty. Does that sound good, huh? Who wouldn't want to fight a war on poverty? It, every place you go. You go to McDonald's, you go to Wendy's, you go to Arby's, you go to the dollar store. Everybody wants you to donate to fight hunger or to fight poverty or to teach kids to read or to do something. Donate for this. How many of you know, I don't donate to charities. No. If we want to, if we want to help somebody, we give them money, we put it in their hand. That's how we help people. Not through charities. Because the people usually don't get it. Amen? Somebody's getting it. Somebody's living very well. Amen? 
It's not the people who need it. But he started this war on poverty. Since 1964, this country has passed out $15 trillion in cash to people. And they have received this money from our government. $15 trillion. Our entire uh, uh, budget for the entire country is somewhere around three and a half or four trillion dollars a year. I mean, now you're talking about a huge, uh, you're talking about enough money to build everybody in this country a brand new home and buy them a new car to put in the garage. That's what $15 trillion would do. Amen? Everybody, and they could also go on vacation and live the rest of their life without working. That's what $15 trillion would do. Amen? Where's the money? It was given to people. Gone. Another $7 trillion has been spent by our government on programs. Programs. Things like doing this program, parks, doing this program, doing programs to help the poor, school lunch programs, all kinds of programs. Now, all that $23 trillion, $22 trillion, somewhere in the neighborhood between $22 and $23 trillion, since 1964 has been spent to fight the war on poverty. And they're still spending close to a trillion dollars every year. And guess what? The rate of poverty in this country is every bit as high as it was then. The percentage of poor people is still the same. The reason for it is because money is not the answer to poverty. No, the answer is breaking the spirit. There is a spirit, a demonic spirit of poverty that has gotten into people, has gotten into certain regions of the country, Appalachia. There's a lot of poor people in Appalachia. A lot of poor people around the country. They're generally in pockets. How many of you know that almost all poor people come from poor families? And almost all rich people come from rich families. You ever think about that? People who are wealthy, who have good jobs and make good money, who make bad investments and lose all their money, they don't stay broke. Not very long. I knew a guy one time, a Jewish man. He wanted to invest in a nightclub. He put his home up. He put everybody's home up, all of his friends. Huge investment at the time. Lost it all. The equivalent today of, of a million dollars. That's a lot for just a man and his wife to invest. He lost it. In three months, he was broke. She, and they came over for, for dinner. And I go, oh my goodness, John. What are you going to do? I was just, my heart was broken for him. I, what are you going to do? He said, ah, it's just money. So I'll get it back. And he did. He, a Jewish man, not even concerned. I'm telling you what, that guy lost the equivalent of a million dollars and didn't bat an eye. And you know why? Because he has a prosperous soul. Beloved, above all things, it is my wish that you prosper and be in health at the same rate that your soul prospers, 3 John, verse 2. Amen? You're, you want to prosper? Prosper your soul. Get, get, get your soul prosperous. Get God's word concerned. You know, there are, somebody said, there's, there's something like over 2,000 verses in the Bible concerning a prosperity and abundance. I didn't know there was that many. I'd like to get a list of those verses. I'm going to see if I can find a list of them. Or I'll have to go through the Bible and hunt for them. Amen? Because they're there. Believe me, if I set out to find those, I'll find them, won't I, Mary? Yes, 
I mean to tell you, God, there's more in the Bible about abundance and prosperity than there is anything else. Because God wants his people to live in abundance. He, put, he created people and put them in a garden of Eden with everything they need. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything you need will be given to you. Did Jesus say that? Yes, he did. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. I shall not want. Means I have everything I need. And why? Because God's our shepherd. It's the shepherd's obligation to care for the flock. And Jesus is our shepherd. And he is obligated to care for us. And he does. In abundance. But you've got to take it. You've got to receive it by faith. Amen. When people are broke, the first thing I do is break the spirit of poverty in their lives. And if they will keep their mouth shut, they will increase. You keep your mouth shut for 90 days. After I break that spirit of poverty in your life, and I'm telling you what, you will begin to increase. And it might happen sooner than that. I got a call this week from somebody living in a remote part of the country. Very little work out there. He got a hold of this blessing. In the last year, he's, he's, he's doubled. He now has lots of work. He's one of the few people out there that does. But he does. And you know why? Because he's super blessed. I want you to join that super blessed group too. Amen. People are calling me on the phone now. I'm going, Pastor Jim, this is one of the super blessed. And I go, glory to God. I praise God for you people. I want super blessed people. Super blessed people who increase. Amen. And once I break that spirit of poverty in your life and you start watching your words, I am here to absolutely guarantee that you are going to increase within three months. Three months. The fourth month, Abraham watched his words, called himself father of many for three months and his 90-year-old wife got pregnant. Same thing could happen to you. Your life can change in 90 days if you just watch your words. Somebody called me yesterday, bless his heart. He's probably watching this right now. And within 30 seconds of being on the phone, he cursed himself. And he said, this is hard. And I said, there's nothing I can do for you. I can't pray for you today. There's nothing I can do for you. You just overrode anything I could ever pray. Your words are the final authority in your life. Now you watch your words and I can make anything happen for you that you need. Eli did that for Hannah in 1 Samuel chapter 1. You read that. He caused her to have a baby. He caused her to have five more babies simply because of what he spoke. I can do the set. I can, I can make anything happen for you in your life that you need if it's scriptural abundance, healing, whatever you need, if you will watch your words. Please share this video with everybody you know. Have them call me. I will break that spirit of poverty. You call me today, I will make sure there's no spirit of poverty in your life. Then if you watch your words, you're going to increase. Don't forget, it's offering day today. When you make your offering or your donation today, Please call me because I want to speak a blessing over you today. I want to speak. I want to break the curse of poverty in your life today. I want to speak the blessing into your life and you will be blessed. I'm telling you what, people, this is a wonderful thing. God is wonderful. He wants to bless us, but you got to watch your words. But have me break that spirit of poverty in your life. Amen. I'm out of time. God bless you. I'll see you back here Monday. Have a wonderful weekend, and I love you very much.